what needs to change is is we need to we need to know how to lead people. I don't need another leadership book on how to be a leader. I need I need leadership is caught, it's not taught. Because uh, what you don't want is you don't want to feel like you're showing up to somebody else's house party. And you thought this was just finances. Okay? Yeah, right? This is building leaders. Building leaders. If you want to get wealthy, you gotta build leaders. You gotta build leaders. Dude, they have no idea what it actually takes to build a team. Remember, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Hey buddy, I'm just about to step on stage. Had training go. I gotta run, I gotta run. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, dude. Hey, What's up guys, welcome to our vlog episode three. Today we have some unbelievable training planned again, but it's a special episode because we have a Christmas party. Fired up for that, as you can see the Christmas decorations behind me. So anyways, today's gonna be awesome. I know you're gonna enjoy it. Energy, once again, will be off the hook. So come on, let's go. They can do both. My favorite African proverb. Only you can make that look sexy. <laughs> That was a tough subject. So you crushed it. How do I look? Test. So let's talk about perspective here for a second. There's a process to success. Yes? There's a process. It looks a little bit like, I like this. And it doesn't always just feel exactly like that. There's going to be some ups and downs and ups and downs. But there's a process to success, especially in our business, just like other people's business. But if we did a little exercise, let's say later today we did an exercise as a group and I gave everybody a white sheet of paper. And on one side of that paper, you wrote down your goal for the money that you're after next year. So on one side of the paper, you wrote the amount of money that you're after, okay? And maybe it's 100,000. And you said, I'm after $100,000 next year. That's the kind of money that I wanna make here in this business with our team. And on the other side of the paper, you had to write down all the intrinsic values, all the things that you love about this business that you feel are gonna help you get to that 100,000, right? Things like, how about the environment? Do you guys think this office has anything to do with you making that 100,000 next year? Yes. Does it? Yes. yes. How about the relationships? How about the leadership? These kinds of leaders in this kind of office. How about the mentorship? When's the last time you took a product partner for lunch and said, hey, what's it like on the other side of the industry? What's it like outside these walls? How comfortable is it? What about the training that, that, that this environment provides? You don't have to come to training. You get to come to training. You get to come to training. I get to come to, to the presentations on Wednesday. I get to show up early. I get to stay late. This is the stuff that matters long term. And if you want to make a lot of money in business, you need to understand what it takes to make a lot of money here. You know how many people take themselves out of the game right here because they're not making the kind of money they want to make yet? And they throw all the other side of the sheet of paper out the window. They throw it all out. And they're going to go somewhere else to do something different, maybe for 15, 20% more. With all the, without all the other goodies. How short-sighted is that? What kind of a way to live your life is that? Always hopping over the fence. When things get hard, you leave. I was reading about diamonds the other day, and man, I, I couldn't even believe it. It takes 725,000 pounds per square inch to form a diamond at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And when those two things combine, what happens is the carbon and the atoms are bonded, and it forms a diamond. In our business, the carbons is the personal growth. Your ability to become a better version of yourself. Books, seminars, mentorship, whatever it takes. And the, other, and, and the atom is the skill set. Your ability to close, your ability to get better, your ability to get the check from the client, do what's right for people. And you take one of those two things out of the equation, we're all just a fraction of the leader that we could become. And I wanted to start my talk by that because I think it's important. My favorite African proverb says this, if you want prosperity for a year, grow grain. If you want prosperity for 20 years, grow trees. And if you want prosperity for generations, grow people. This environment is how we build people. This is how we build our business. 
This is how we're going to go and get the dream that we want or the goals that we have. I want to share with you five principles for you to implement into your life, into your business, I call it principles of excellence for 2020. I just want to give you five things to think about heading into the next decade. I'm not giving you an excuse to mail in the rest of the year. I'm just giving you things to start to implement and start to think about. The first thing that I want you to write down and think about is this. Replace the how with the who. Replace the how with the who. This is a technique that I use when I get overwhelmed. Here's what most people are asking themselves. How am I going to do this? Here's what you should be asking. Who am I doing this for? What if every time you asked how, you replaced the how with the who? See, most people get stuck in the how. Most people quit in the how. But the champions focus on the who. Who are you doing this for? And if you don't have kids, or you don't have a spouse, or you don't have somebody that motivates you to do it, you know who you should be doing it for? You should be doing it for yourself. Everybody in this room should be doing it for themselves. Because you deserve it. Most people spend their entire life catering to other people. Especially you moms and wives out there. So many women I see lose their independence. They become a great wife and a great mom, but they forget who they are. But you gotta decide who you're doing this for. So replace the how with the who. My second point is create consistency of purpose. It's so important to create consistency of purpose in your life. What do I mean by that? You should be continuously communicating regularly the purpose and the vision of where you're going. Always communicating the purpose. Always communicating the vision. Guys, this is why we're doing it. This, you know, honey, this is why we're going to stick with it. Kids, this is why we're going we're to pay the price. This is what we're after. This is where we're going. This is why it's going to be worth it when. Constantly, constantly talking about the purpose and the vision. Because, the, I mean, the Bible, it says where there's no purpose, where there's no vision, people shall perish. And if you're not communicating that all the time, you're going to struggle. The world around you needs to know. Where are we going? Why are we doing this? Just tell me it's going to be worth it. In every area. The third thing I want you to write down is this. If no one teaches you, you still have to learn it. If no one teaches you, you still have to learn it. Why would you ever wait for somebody else to put the equipment in your hand and teach you how to do something when all you got to do is pick up the axe and start swinging? You learn through experience. Leadership is caught, it's not taught. You get around a leader, you get experience, you get beaten up a little bit, but you have to learn it. It's not your leader's fault. It's not your boss's fault. Never wait to get information. Be resourceful. What if next year you were the most resourceful version of you that you ever were your entire life? In every area, you're resourceful in your health and you're going to finally lose that 25 pounds. Get resourceful. In your business, maybe it's your faith, your spirit life, whatever. Whatever area. My fourth point, and I want you to really hear me on this one because there's a lot of you, I think, that are stuck with this one. People who don't pursue their dreams will not help you achieve yours. People who don't pursue their dreams will not help you achieve yours. Eagles don't hang with ducks. There's some eagles in this room that are starting to quack. And you're hanging on to people in your life that have no interest in going for their goals whatsoever, but you somehow think that they're gonna help you build yours. The key to building an organization, whether it's a church or a business or anything, is you recruit and list a bunch of people with the same passion and a similar purpose, and you light everybody on fire at the same time, and you start to go and start to change for the better. Some of you have some people on your team and in your life that show up every day with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> And one person with a fire extinguisher can put out five or six people on fire. And my fifth is this. Pursue the mentality of a winner. Pursue the mentality of a winner because it'll start to shape your identity. There's a winning mentality and there's 10 points to this and I, you really do need to write these down because I go back to this list every single month. Last month I had to check myself on one of these, on one of these 10 points as I do every month. I'm constantly striving to have the mentality of a winner. Point number one, a winner never turns their back on the team or engages them with intent to hurt. It's never okay to turn your back on the team. As soon as you turn your back on your team, 
you lose that trust and sometimes it's gone forever. My second point mentality to being a winner. A winner never abandons ship, no matter how much water they're taking on. A winner never abandons ship, no matter how much water they're taking on. The best captains that sailed the most famous ships that sank over the last two, three hundred years were all famous for getting off the ship last. The captain is the last person to abandon the ship. When I had the blessing and opportunity to sail the world when I was 19 years old, I, I got in a 200-foot 200, 200 sailing vessel with three masts, like a pirate ship, and I learned how to sail using the stars, and we sailed from San Diego to Hawaii to Australia to Africa and then back to Halifax. An unbelievable experience. The first thing the captain taught us how to do was the, we, we learned the abandoned ship signal. It was seven shorts and one long. And he said, when you hear seven shorts and one long, all hands on deck. And if you hear it again, we're going to abandon ship. And he said, I will be the last person to get off the ship in every scenario. I see so many leaders in their organizations and their team, they're just, they're, they're just jump ship. They just, they, it gets hard, they quit. And they wonder why they couldn't build a team to start with. They wonder why they made no money to start with. It's because they, they decided they were eventually going to quit anyway. Of course they weren't going to make any money. Maybe the reason that you're not making any money is because you haven't decided you're not going to quit yet. My third mentality to being a winner. A winner accepts the past, cherishes the present, but speaks the future. Accepts the past, cherishes the present, but speaks the future. It's time to accept the past. You wouldn't be who you are today with all of your gifts and blessings without all the things that happened for you. The things that you've been resenting in your past and hating about yourself and angry and resentful, all those things that you've bottled up and pushed way down, way down, are the exact things that made you the amazing man or woman that you are today. You take away those things, you're a fraction of who you are today. It's time to wake up and just let go of the past, but it's also time for us to cherish the present. A lot of people stuck in the future. A lot of people stuck in the past. Less people than ever are cherishing the right now. This moment, just, just taking even this moment today of us just being here today, gathered here today, I'm grateful even for this moment. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna speak the future. All the winners that I know, they speak the future. But here's where we're going. Grateful for today, grateful to be with you today, Natasha in this office, but man, here's where we're going. My fourth point, a winner never blames anyone else for anything in their life. A winner never blames anyone else for anything in their life. Blaming other people for things is a quick recipe to disaster. I used to blame people for things. I used to hold in resentment. There's times I still do. That's how losers think. Winners don't think like that. When I'm winning, I'm not blaming other people. I'm taking responsibility. In fact, when I look back, it, it kind of the last five to 10 years, when I was winning at the highest levels is when I was taking the most responsibility for was it, what wasn't working in my life. I was shining more light and more vulnerability and more realness on what wasn't working in my life in a positive light as an example to be trying to get better. And that's when I was winning at the highest level. And when I was down and stuck and, 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 and depressed, Man, I was pulling a lot of fingers. My fifth point, a winner is grateful all of the time. And when the worst comes out, they hit the reset button. A winner is grateful all the time. And when the worst comes out, they hit the reset button. It's important to be grateful all the time, but every once in a while, the worst of you is gonna come out. We all have it. As you start to grow and evolve and get to the next level, the worst of you will start to change. But when that thing comes out, you have to hit the reset button. You can't carry it forward. You can't get too down about it. You can't start feeling like a loser. When there's a setback that happens, Curtis, we just gotta move on. On to the next, on to the next. Number six, a winner never gossips or allows gossip around them. This opportunity is too great to let a negative culture step in. I had an experience about four or five years ago where I called up my sister and I said, hey, I need to apologize for something. She said, what? I said, I just had one of your marketing directors sit in my office and I listened to her rip your leadership apart for 30 minutes. She says, so why are you apologizing? I said, because I let her say it. And I listened. I said, I promise, I promise that I will never allow somebody, and it was in a gossiping manner. 
I promise I'll never let another person gossip to me about anybody else on my team until they've talked to that person first and confronted that person directly with that issue. And I realized that I was allowing people in my business to drive a wedge between me and other people. And that was my fault. My fault for listening. And I, I'm just proud to say that I've never had a moment like that since. Not like that. I learned a lot in that moment. My seventh point, a winner moves to action. It doesn't overthink everything. Can I be honest? Yeah. Overthinking is an, is an avoidance behavior. That's your lazy tendencies starting to come out. But Steve, I'm just an overthinking, it overthinker. You're just a bit lazy because winners just go to work. Winners move to action. Winners know that by doing, they're getting experience. That's how you gain momentum, by doing. It's not a win, it's not a loss, it's just experience. It's just another foot, another inch, another half a mile. You're just, when you're, when you're doing, you're moving. That's what winners understand. Just move to action. Number eight, a winner ex accepts setbacks gracefully. A winner accepts setbacks gracefully. Let me tell you straight up, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have some setbacks. But you know what my coach Calvin taught me how to do a long time ago? He said, Steve, you have to anticipate the challenges. He always said, hey, what challenges are you anticipating? That's how we start at each call. I start each month with my goals, what we're gonna do, and then I say, what challenges am I anticipating? I'm probably gonna lose one of my best teammates this month. How am I gonna deal with that? What's that gonna look like? What am I gonna do to overcome it? What preparations can I make now so when that happens, and it will, I'm prepared for it. And winners are the ones that get setbacks but accept it gracefully. Always. I learn everything about you when you're losing and nothing about you when you're winning. And I'm, I'm looking myself in the mirror and I'm, I'm saying that to me right now, not you. I learn everything about me when I'm losing and I learn nothing about me when I'm winning. When I'm winning, I throw up the game tape. When I'm losing, it's time to break it down. Number nine, a winner always competes. It's so important to create a winning culture, a competitive culture. But let me tell you something about competing and winning. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. I want a legacy of a team that's, that's in the fight all the time, that's always in the hunt, always in the game, always competing, always climbing. There's setbacks, we take it gracefully. When we win, we're humble. When we lose, we learn. And I want a team that knows that deep down, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win absolutely is. You have to want to win in order to win. That's a ticket into the game. And my last point, a winner flat out wins. A winner just wins. Have you ever heard somebody say, and the winners just keep winning? Man, a winner just wins, they flat out win. The middle class, lower class mindset, they look at those people and they go, oh, that person's just lucky. And the ball just bounced in the, in the, in the right court. I'll tell you what, a winner just finds a way to win when everybody's counted them out. When all the odds are stacked against them. They're too young, no market, came from nothing. Had a bunch of losses before this. Were down and out when they arrived. When you feel like you've restarted here 10, 15 times in a row. When all the odds just feel like they're stacked against you and the world just feels like it's closing in on you. The winner just finds a way to just squeak through. They just find the hole. They just look for the light. The, like literally the darkness, the cave is closing in. They can barely see anything. The pressure's on their chest. And they just, they're just, they're obsessed with looking for the light. And it's getting smaller some days and some days it's barely there. But until you have breath, breath left in your body here, you guys, the light always exists. The light will always exist. You just have to find it and winners just win. And they keep winning and winning and winning. And I would just urge you in 2020 and this next 12 months to decide that this is the year where I start to feel like a winner. And everything I think would come from that. December, in my opinion, is the most important month of the year. November is the biggest month of the year. December is the most important month of the year. December is the month where you have your biggest personal month. December is the most important month of the year. Your personal numbers are key. Finishing the year strong, building that momentum, It'll make everything about the end of this year better. You'll feel better about building your business plan. You'll feel better about, better about Christmas dinner. You'll feel better January 1st when you wake up. You'll be fired up. And the impact that it'll have on the first three months of next year is gonna be too hard to measure. It'll be that big. I hope you guys got some value out of that. 
some things to think about heading into the end of the year and making sure that we just don't stay happy at 40% growth year over year. We gotta double down and do that again, and I'm, and I'm gonna challenge this team to do it bigger and better next year. Sound good? Yeah. Okay guys, just have an awesome day. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Let's have a Christmas party. Wow. Sharking tribe. Good to see you. This is awesome. Oh. Yeah. Hold on, now. hold on. Man, you gotta come check out all this food. Come check it out. The little butter tarts are fantastic. Are these good? Steven's about to eat his first vegan pumpkin chocolate chip muffin. Go for it. Man, how much fun is this? This is so much fun. This is so good. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our third episode of our vlog. Please make sure you subscribe on YouTube. I also want you to share it. I'd really appreciate that and go comment below and like it. I hope you guys had fun tonight. Hope you felt the energy. Christmas season is upon us. It's a, it's a time to be grateful. It's a time to start looking inward at what we can change about ourselves into the new year and, uh, and make sure we finish the year strong. So I appreciate being here today and we'll see you soon.